Sometimes we think that we can have a double life and it's going to be okay. And I know that sounds like intense, but there are many people in the world, and it could be even you and me, that have a double standard. And we have to know that our calling to serve and love the Lord is a sacred calling, and we cannot play with fire and think that we're not going to have consequences. And that's why Paul is bringing so much sobriety to our hearts, especially in this season where there's so many things that might, we might be confused, you know. Yeah, there is this grace of the Lord where He grants us, you know, the power to overcome, but we can never abuse that grace, or we're not supposed to abuse that grace. So welcome to Living Life and to today's reflection, and let's think and let's reflect today. First Corinthians chapter 10 verses 14 through 22 Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people, judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar? Do I mean then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God and I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than He? Again, Paul the Apostle is bringing this reflection specifically in regards of idolatry. And he says to flee from that, meaning we have to be able to discern when we are placing anything in the place that only belongs to the Lord. And the reason Paul is being so um, like cautious in emphasizing this is because that can happen to any of us. That happened to the people of Israel, as we saw last time, they were experiencing the miracles of the Lord. The, 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 the Red Sea was open before them. They saw the cloud of fire and, and uh, they, they saw the, the, the miracles of the Lord, but still they embraced some idols in their hearts. And uh, it could be achievements. It could be people that you love in a way that you are thinking about them maybe more than what the Lord uh, you know, wants you to do it. Uh, and the Lord wants us to discern that. And Paul brings another argument, not just the, the lesson that we learn from Israel, but also that we are participating in the communion with the Lord in the Last Supper. You know, that uh, cup that we are drinking is the, the blood of Jesus that speaks about a covenant that we have with the Lord that is a serious covenant because God gave His only Son for us. And that bread that we are breaking represents the body of Christ. And this is sacred. You know, we have to understand how important, how serious it is, the sacraments that we participate in, specifically the table of the Lord. Because that says you belong to Jesus. So you are not, the Lord is, is a jealous God and, and He's not willing to share with you, share you with other gods, you know, or idols. That's why uh, it's very important for us to be aware of that. And Paul says here that the idolatry that the pagans were practicing was not just like adoring this piece of, you know, metal or wood, whatever, but they were actually worshiping demons. So there is something spiritual in idolatry that the Lord wants us to be really careful uh, in our hearts. 
what is happening. And, and I think about, you know, in, in, our, in today's society, well, there is people, there are people in the world that they actually adore idols. But in our society, sports or, or many things have become uh, idols, even like sometimes video games, they become like the obsession of people. We are obsessed with that. We, we wake up in the morning and think about it and we go to bed thinking about it. It could be money, it could be resentment. And the Bible says like, hey, be careful because the Lord, like I was saying, is a jealous God and will not share you with anyone else. So this reflection, it, it, Paul wants, to go, wants us to go deeper, led by the Spirit, that we are not just being a person that attends a church or practice certain things, but actually have a fellowship with the Lord. We belong to Jesus. He bought you. He, we are His precious possession, Peter says. And that's why we have to say, Lord, I am not going to serve two masters. Jesus even said that you cannot serve God or the God of money, mammon. You have to, you cannot serve both. Either you serve the Lord and despise mammon, which is the God of the riches, or you serve the riches and then despise God. So that's why God is calling us today to this pr profound reflection, not to bring condemnation, but to bring conviction. It's not about feeling guilty, like, oh, you know, I'm a horrible person. No, it's about saying, Lord, I want to be faithful. I don't want to take for granted that I'm doing great, but I want to be able to discern. In Psalm 19, uh, David says, like, Lord, search my heart because there are things that I cannot see, that I, I have blind spots in my life, and that's why I need your word. I need the Holy Spirit. I need my friends, my uh, the, the people in the church, the, the community that is going to help me to grow. So I want to ask you this question. In what areas of your life do you tend to rely more on worldly wisdom than on God's counsel? Who are you consulting more? Because we're supposed, obviously, to consult the Lord, to ask, inquire of the Lord in the different aspects of our life because He is our God. He is our Father. He is a good shepherd that can lead us uh, in the middle of so much confusion and so many things going on. So that's what today's reflection brings. And I want to encourage you to take time, slow down, think about it, pray about it, and even talk to other friends about this in your own life. Because in Hebrews, he says that you, we can exhort one another to not be deceived by sin. And that's exactly what the Lord wants us to do you and me, in order to be victorious, conquer, to be faithful to the Lord, even until the end. I always thank the Lord for the clarity of His Word. The, the Word of the Lord is like a sword that pierces our hearts, our bones, uh, discerns our thoughts, the soul and the spirit, in order for us to be pure before the Lord. And this is something that the Lord uh, wants us to keep growing in this faithfulness to the Lord. So let's pray about today's reflection. Father, we thank you because you are you uh, made a covenant with your people, with, with me, with, with the people that are watching this video. And you want us to be just for you, Lord. We, in Jesus' name, renounce to any type of idol. idol. Give us discernment to realize if we are adoring something that is not you, Lord, and we receive forgiveness and we receive discernment and we receive grace to be faithful, fully faithful to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you for being with us today. May God bless you and help you to grow more and more.